I'm Ashley Cannon Newell for Paper Tray Ink and in this part of the Stamp Affair videos I'm going to show you how to make stitched embellishments and here are some still shots of the finished projects um, but to get started I'm just going to go ahead and take this tag sale die and some polka dotted aqua mist pattern paper and I'm also going to be using this coaster board as like a backing to make a little bit my embellishment a little bit stiff. So I have my cuddle bug here. It's very well loved and used. Um, so please excuse all of the cut marks. But I'm just going to go ahead and put my die face down onto the pattern paper. Make sure it's even with the pattern design. And go ahead and run it through the cuddle bug. Okay, so now that I have um, the pattern paper one cut, I'm going to take the die and cut it from the coaster board. Um, and the reason for me doing it is that the pattern paper is thin, and since I am making an embellishment, um, this is one technique that I like to use when I want to make sure that it's a sturdy embellishment. I back it with some sort of heavier material, and in this case, I'm using coaster board. So it matches up perfectly, so I'm just going to take my adhesive to just adhere the pattern paper directly on top of the coaster board. And that way you get a very sturdy die cut there. All right, now that I have my embellishment all backed, I am taking a paper piercer and I'm just going to use these holes. I shouldn't call them holes, they're not holes. They're embossed dots. These here that were embossed onto the pattern, the pattern paper here, I'm using those as a guide. So I thought this was really cool because you can just easily go through. I know exactly where to pierce your holes to do a hand stitch. So I'm just going to go ahead and go completely around the entire die cut, piercing the holes along that embossed, those embossed dots there. Those are really debossed dots because they're going inwards, but it's just really good that they're already there. Okay, so here I am now with my completed pierced hole die cut, and I have my needle here, and I'm using floss. This is a yellow, like an orangey yellow, kind of reminds me of summer sunrise floss. You can use any type of material you want. You can use thread. Here, I see, and see here I have it knotted at the end. So I loop it through the, through the needle and then tie it at the end. But anyway, you can use thread. You can use floss. You can even use twine. I actually like using twine. So um, it's up to you on to what materials you want to use to actually add your stitching. Okay, so I'm starting to put my needle through the back of the die cut first because I want that knot, I'm going to remove this here, but I want that knot to be at the back and I want it to show in the front. So I'm going to pull it through all the way and I have a lot of floss here because I'm going to be doing the entire embellishment. But pull it through tight and now I'm able to continue along doing my hand stitch. So I go from the front, thread through the front, and then I'll pull my thread all the way through 
and I'm just holding my thread there to make sure it doesn't get tangled, which it does sometimes if you're having a lot of uh, floss on your needle like I do. But now I'm back in the back and threading it through. It's just it's just really good to make sure you remember exactly where you are. Are you thread, supposed to be threading through the back of the die cut or the front? Because sometimes, you know, if you do this like I do while watching TV or something like that, you could lose your place and then have to go back and re-thread everything through. But it's something to do to add a lot of texture and make sure embellishments look very professional because you're adding that, that threading all along the edge there. And you can't get any better with the hand stitch because it's it's very um, neat. And unlike with a sewing machine where it can kind of go in different directions, you have more control when you hand stitch. It takes a lot longer, but I think you get a lot um, a lot better of a result. So I'm just going to go through a little bit of this to show the process um, on how I am threading everything through. See, so I have three stitches there so far. And I'm not going to show the video of the entire process because that would just be a little too painful. But I will share a few more stitches here just so you can get an idea the process. Okay, so I'm pretty much on the last few stitches here. So I'm going to show you how I finish it off here. And you, you know, you always, if you start from the back, then you'll end in the back as well, just so you know. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, tie my knot. I'm going to use the thread that was there on the other side to secure it. I'm just going to actually thread my needle through to actually start the knot and I'll do it again to secure it. There's so many ways you can secure your, your stitching here, but this is just one of them. I'm going to show you another one in a minute. Okay, so now that I have my knot secure there, I'm just going to take my scissors to cut that extra floss off. Okay, so if you want to secure it a little bit more, you can just take some scotch tape. I just have some clear tape and I'm just going to add it right there behind it. So you don't even have to do any knots. You can just do that step there. It's completely up to you, but the tape works looks really great too. So now that I have my floss secured in the back of my die cut, I just want to show you the finished product with the hand stitching around the edge of the tag. All right, for my next portion, I have a Bloom Builders number no. two die and some vintage cream felt cut into a strip. And I'm just going to go ahead and create my sandwich and run it through the cuddle bug. And um, when I die cut felt, I like to run it through at least twice. And so I'm going to do it once going forward and then now come back 
and that usually does the trick. Sometimes I go through um, one more cycle. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and move my cuddle bug out the way and remove the excess from the the actual die cut from the part here and it's just pulling apart just fine. You don't want to tear too much, you'll get a lot of the uh, fibers from the felt, but it cut beautifully. All right, so I'm just gonna clean this up a little bit and pierce my holes, get all the die cut fragments out. And there it is. And so for my next step, what I wanna do is take my my needle and my floss, again, I'm using the same floss that I used in the uh, previous portion of the video. And I'm, it's the same technique. I have a knot at the end and I have it threaded through the needle. So I'm just going to show you how you can hand stitch. I'm gonna start from the back, again, so that knot is in the back of the die cut. But I'm just gonna hand stitch freely with no pierced holes and this is very easy to do when you have uh, fabric or felt because it moves. Now if you do this with paper it's a little bit more difficult because the paper may crinkle as you are threading it so I like to use this technique for felt. So I'm just going to hand stitch all the way around each petal, the edge of each petal and just to give it a pop of color when I create the uh, bloom and also some texture. So you'll see the process on how I do that. So I'm just gonna share with you how I'm threading this through and making sure each part of those, each stitch I should say, is flush with the actual Belt. No lumps, no knots or anything like that, which can happen um, as you're hand stitching because it's a lot of back and forth and you can easily knot that floss. So just take your time and you really will love the results. Okay, so I'm just finishing up my first petal here, threading it. And I'm going to do the same thing all the way to each of these. So I just zoomed in here so you can see a lot more closely the actual process. And you be careful not to stitch your, your fingers. And I'm just going to go ahead and do this last stitch and go right back through. Okay, so now I'm gonna share the part on how I'm going to secure it. I'm just tying it into a knot using the, the needle and the floss as my guide and just pulling it tight until it's snug. You don't want a loose knot because then that thread will come loose a little bit. So you want as tight as you can get it. All right, so now that's secure, I'm just gonna take my scissors and snip off the extra part and start the process over again, knotting my thread and then moving on. So I stitch, here's the back of it, stitch it all, and here's the front. So it's hard to see here what the flower is gonna look like, but you can see how it transformed from the basic die, die cut to this version. So now I'm going to go ahead and build my bloom, um, threading through those holes that were die cut all the way through each one up and then back down and then up and then back down I snipped a little bit of this off because it was a little frayed there. But 
going to keep going. This will be a lot easier if you have something like a needle to do it. It will work a lot faster because that needle will guide that floss right through. But I'm managing just fine just by um, keeping the, the end of that floss together. And I just kind of twist it. And I'll give me get it a give it a point there so I can go ahead and thread it through. Okay, so I have it all threaded through those pierced holes at the bottom portion. And now I'm just going to show how you just tie together to actually build that flower. So I take both ends and I start to tie a knot. So I just cross it over once and then tighten. Just pull and it squeezes in basically to form that bloom. So I'm going to pull tight and then I'm going to go ahead and finish it off and secure it by tying the knot. This makes a very beautiful embellishment especially with the stitch petals. So just think of all the possibilities you can do um, by adding just some hand stitching to any of your die cuts to make your embellishments pop a little bit more. Like I said, add color add texture and make them look a lot more finished, polished, and professional. And here is the finished bloom. And you can see how, it would, think about how it will look with no, without any hand stitching. And this just really adds a lot of pop color and makes the flower look very pretty. Okay, so I wanna show you how I'm gonna finish off this particular embellishment. I have my hand stitched tag die and I'm taking this Just For You stamp set I'm going to use a couple of these um, stamps in this hand and flowers and stitched um, just so my tag can say hand stitched flower. So I have it here on my acrylic block and I'm going to take um, some true black ink and ink up my stamps and then stamp directly onto the pattern paper right here on the bottom. Okay, so it says hand stitch, and then I have the uh, sentiment flowers. Since I only have one flower that I'm going to be adhering to the tag, I'm carefully only inking from the R left, so it just says flowers, so it's not plural. And I just love the ink pad that because it allows you to be able to do that. So if you happen to just get over a little bit too far, what you can do is just use your finger to wipe off any excess uh, ink that's on the S. But I was able to do it this time with no problem at all. So I'm just going to go ahead and stamp that right in the center there. And I have my custom stamp, hand, hand stitch flower. And this is some Helmars Premium Craft Glue. So I'm going to use that to adhere my hand stitch flower here right to the tag. Just adding some adhesive all around it. And if the recipient wants to remove the, the flower and, you know, like make um, another embellishment out of it, I think that would be really good. You can use this uh, embellishment here and you can add it a bobby pin or um, put it on a headband or anything like that. And I even on clothes um, as an embellishment, and I think it would be perfect. So there's the tag. Just about finished. And here are a few still shots. I've added it to a gift box just to show how you can use the tag as it is as a finished product. Okay, moving along, I have one more technique I'm going to show with this AdSense die. I'm just going to die cut it from fine linen cardstock. 
I'm going to basically show how I use a sewing machine, machine to add stitching to my cardstock die cuts. Alright, so I'm going to head on over and add stitching around the border using my sewing machine. Okay, so now I'm at my sewing machine. Here's my die cut and um, I'm going to just select my stitch. I'm using a straight stitch and my machine allows me to um, adjust my width of my stitch and so I like it to be a little bit wide but you can adjust it how you want. Most machines allow you to do that. So, um, my machine is already set up, you know, with the thread and the bobbin. And I'm just going to show you basically how I do the turns and things like that. So, I'm just going to lower my foot here to get started. And I always start with my needle down. So, I'm just going to push my button that allows me to start with my needle down. As you can see here now it's engaged down and um, it just gives me a little bit more control when I know when it finishes, it finishes at the end of the stitch. So I have my finger on the reverse button because I want to start my sewing machine stitch and reverse back to secure that stitch. I know this video is not really, it's hard to see, but try to get the best angle possible so you could see how I go along here. And I don't like to go too fast because when you do that, you kind of may go out of control a little bit, and um, you can just move along. It's very easy when you have a straight stitch to go by. So what I'm doing now is I'm lift my foot and move my die cut around, and is and my needle still down. So I'll keep doing that and adjusting the die cut around as I do each stitch around each angle. And that allows me to go around the entire border with ease and with it not looking too curvy. So you can add um, machine stitched borders to any of your die cuts. Um, I really like to do it with paper. You can also do it with felt. And it just adds a very nice finished component to your die cuts, making you create wonderful embellishments. So here's the embellishment stitched up around the edge, and here is a card to show you the finished product and how I layered it with other die cuts and how the stitching just adds a little bit of extra pop. Thanks so much for watching this video on how I add stitching to my die cuts. Mm -hmm.